So last night I had a vision, right? And it was kind of like, like a prophecy from God himself. I need to go build my own operating system. I realize now that if you have no idea who Terry Davis is, then that reference would go straight over your head. But I think that just makes things even funnier. <laughs> Who needs ad revenue? Not me. I'll happily pay the price for a banger like this. Today, we are doing stuff. Ooh. It's a spot. I've been hard at work. Yesterday, I figured out how memory readers worked. And today, I figured out how to really use them to their full potential. And my God, it is absolutely insane. Before we dive into that though, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the goals for the game engine that I'm working on. Game engine, right? Just kind of share my vision for what this is and what this isn't. The GitHub repository is linked down below so you can go check it out for yourself. But basically, I've got in here in the uh, description, this bad boy is a bullet train built in C style C++ that runs on simplicity and practicality. Now, what on earth does that mean? To kick things off, there is absolutely no reason why I cannot build out an environment that allows me to produce games as quickly as if I were to be in an engine like Godot, Unity, Unreal. There's a few key little ideas which when all stacked together in a cohesive unit, allow for something like that. So memory readers are one, uh, you can just list off a bunch of them like fixed length strings, range operations, they are insane. Coroutines is another amazing example. Hot reloading is something I wanna figure out. Uh, there's, there's, there's just like a bunch of those things which allow you to stay in the idea space of game programming and like game design and trying to just whip up a game, right? And I'm really starting to feel my knowledge as a programmer kind of hit this I don't know what I would call it, like an inflection point of all of a sudden now I've actually got like the minimum amount of tools to be able to figure something out and actually ship. I have a feeling that with this project that I'm working on right now, it's, it's pretty much the inflection point, which is very exciting. Now I was having a chat to someone on the Discord about this just earlier, but you take a game engine that's trying to be generic and serve as many people as possible, like Unreal Engine. Yes, it allows a shit ton of people who otherwise wouldn't have been able to make games to make games. That's the plus. The downside to that is because of the nature of how generic it is, there is so much bloat in there and it's very difficult to just pick apart the things that you need and get a game done with them because you hit the compile button and it takes 10 minutes. So now the other end of that spectrum, and this is kind of where I'm sitting at the moment is, all right, well, I've got an idea for a game and it's this very specific thing. It's a very specific style, you could say, of it's 2D, it's side-scrolling, and it's pixel art. So those are the constraints, and then I'm trying to build up my own tool set, which I'm calling a game engine, of things that will allow me to make games in that style very quickly. Now, there are a bunch of things that apply to the set of all styles, and we could call that the base layer. And a lot of what I'm doing with my base layer at the moment is I'm looking at Ryan Flurry and he's just got a bunch of examples of what he's put into his base layer. So I'm like looking at all those different concepts and being like, all right, let's internalize this. Let's figure out why it's useful and how I can do it as simply as possible for my own engine. I'm actually just going to stop calling it an engine because it's not really an engine. It's a base layer. So I'm building my own base layer. But the only reason I'm building my own base layer is so I can actually internalize those concepts. For example, the memory arena. I had no idea how to use it because I hadn't built it from scratch myself and understood it until the last couple of days. My goal with sharing this repository with you and this entire journey is A, to just document what I'm up to because I find it kind of fun just looking back in like two years time or something to see where I was at and what I was up to and all that kind of stuff. And also just share these really cool concepts that I've learned because like, the memory arena alone, right? What does it allow you to do? It completely gets rid of RAII, resource acquisition is initialization, which in turn pretty much gets rid of object-oriented programming. It also gets rid of the need for smart pointers and the need for garbage collection from memory arenas. It's like 20 lines of code as well. 
Like if I could go back in time to when I was like learning smart pointers and I was writing my own game engine and all that kind of stuff and I was having all these issues. If I could go back in time to that guy and be like, hey, just spend a day learning memory readers and you'll save yourself all of this pain. <laughs> if I could go do that to myself, that would be absolutely amazing. But I can't do that because that's in the past. So the next best thing is sharing that with you guys in the hopes that you can kind of just skip that pain as quickly as possible and just move on to the next best thing. So that's pretty much my goal with this entire repository and like sharing all the source code and these videos and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, now that I've got that laid out, welcome to the series officially. Um, I've been doing daily for a few days now, but we're gonna call this the official starting point for the entire thing. All the goals have been laid out. I've shared my goals for game development. I've shared my goals for the game engine. All that's really left to do is to just go implement all this stuff and make some goddamn games. So really looking forward to it. We're gonna get started right now.